What's up, Capoeira Nation? Welcome back to the Capoeira Experience Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for being back and listening to the Capoeira. Uh, this is a podcast for the Capoeira community. This is pretty much for us to share the knowledge, information, and, and, and whatever can help us to grow our Capoeira community and grow and bring more people to Capoeira community so the Capoeira community can grow and also support each other. Uh, so today I have a, a very good two uh, special guests because they, they are running a really, really cool program in, in Ohio. Uh, I think it's really cool how, how we can bring new information for people that they don't know about Capoeira, how Capoeira grows, how, how Capoeira can interact and how that can affect their life the same way have affected many life of, of many of us. Uh, Capoeira changed my life and Capoeira changed the life of many, many people. And I've seen it where people like go out of the streets just because of Capoeira. Um, just a, as an example, right? So uh, uh, let me introduce you to Leila and my brother, Biriba. How are you guys doing? Good, how are you? Good, good, good. Good, good, good. How are you? Good, good. I'm very happy to have, to have you guys here. And then I've seen you guys, uh, uh, especially in Biriba's Instagram, I saw you, your post about this program is, is really, really cool. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's let's do a little quick uh background so everybody or whoever is listening to a podcast can can get to know you guys. Let's start with Leila. Yeah. That's so Leila I'm, I'm sorry. from Brazil. My name is Leila Vieira. I'm from Brazil Perfect. originally. Yes. Um I study languages and literatures. And um, I came to the U.S. about 10 years ago to do my graduate studies. So I did my master's first in Indiana, and then I came to Ohio. Oh, I did Indiana? my PhD. Yeah. I was oh, cool. Notre Dame. Where, where in Indiana? Notre Dame. It's in South Bend. Oh, South Bend. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I was here. to I... the border of Michigan. Oh, cool. Oh, there. Yeah. All the way up there. Yeah. That's cool. Um, and... Um, I graduated from my with my PhD about two years ago, and now I'm the Portuguese language coordinator at the Ohio State University. So, uh, people who are studying Portuguese one, two, and three, uh, I'm coordinating those classes. Um, I've always liked capoeira, even when I was living in Brazil, but I never had the opportunity to uh, practice and learn about it. Yeah. Uh, coming to the U.S., of course, my relationship to Capoeira changed because it's a way to be connected to my home country. Yeah, that's and, okay. that's, that's fine. Yeah, since having kids, this became even more important because I want them to have something like. Yeah. They're, they're so Americanized in a way, and I think uh, yeah, yeah. it's a good. It's a good. Um, it's something I wanted to keep in their lives. So yeah. that they knew and are proud of, like not just soccer and basketball, but also like uh, you should know this about your country. Yeah, 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 uh, absolutely, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, and then how how do you get connected to the uni university? Well, I worked there at the university, oh, so okay. um, and uh, as language program coordinator for Portuguese, part of my job is getting people to know that Portuguese is a language that yeah. everyone comes in, they want to take Spanish or they want to take French or Italian, so yeah. some of those more um, popular languages, I guess. And the yeah. Portuguese have the added um, challenge, I guess, to okay. get students interested in Portuguese. And part of my job, so uh, I get a teaching release to do some of these outreach and recruiting things, uh, efforts, which is how this project uh, came about. Ah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. What about you, video? Go a little bit of your background and everything. Sure. So, <clears throat> hello everyone, and thank you, Kashi, for having us here. It's cool. amazing to be like to have the opportunity to talk more about this and the amazing work that Leila has been doing. Um, so I started training capoeira in 2008 back in ecuador i'm originally nice. from ecuador um and that was when i was an undergrad student um from the moment moment i i i came in contact with capoeira it was like i fell in love yeah i know many people will relate to that nice <laughs> now it's just right so 
Capoeira for me came as this way of like doing something more and then little by little the interest became something more than that and I wanted to just explore capoeira from many different perspectives. Yeah. Um, so I, I kept training in Ecuador but then what happened was that when I applied for my master's program here in the U.S. and I came here um, I started uh, exploring capoeira from the different perspectives of what academia has uh, trying to connect yeah and so for me it was like okay there, there is a lot of research already around capoeira but how is it that this knowledge is like so disconnected sometimes from yeah. from us like from the community that practices capoeira um so one of my motivations has been to try to create a bridge between those two worlds nice and yeah, and actually, I, I, my research for the master's program was around capoeira, my experience and the experience of capoeiristas in, back in Ecuador. Um, and then after my master's, I had the opportunity to, um, to work at OSU okay. as, at the Center for Latin American Studies. Nice. And there I wanted to uh, start like, creating ways to 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 promote capoeira a little bit more because in Columbus uh, there are some capoeiristas but there has not been like so far right now there's not like a a process that has been like uh developing for too many years so yeah I was thinking that maybe it was a good idea to start like working on in a community in Columbus yeah. but also wherever right so even here at Ohio University in Athens, where I did my master's, um, I also taught a couple of workshops. Now I'm teaching actually these days at a, a regional dance, College of Dance conference. So it's amazing how it's been possible to take up data to all these places around academia and that people see like the value that, that yeah. Capoeira has, right? And then, so yeah, and then, then for me, my particular experience was that Capoeira has given me all the tools that have allowed me to be in, in grad school. I was recently um, accepted at the PhD program in Portuguese at OSU. Oh, nice. But all of that was thanks to Capoeira and all yeah. the work I've done. Through. I remember many years ago, someone in my grad undergrad school told me like uh what are you why why don't you stop they said like why don't you stop jumping like that will get you nowhere and it's like well no <laughs> you know uh, look how how far capoeira has allowed me to to go yeah and so yeah i i think for me it's important that i can share with people and now with with the kids at k-12 institutions what uh art and what like culture and, and other practices like Apoeta can bring to you and yeah. the amazing yeah, opportunities yeah. that it can open for you. Yeah. Yeah, because Capoeira, Capoeira is just like I've seen like kids like like addicted to drugs and kids in the streets. And then like perfect example in, in Brazil on Bahia. This uh Mr. Boyen, she, he has a huge, huge, huge kids program where he take he he it is actually a, a small documentary in, in YouTube where he, he's been taking kids out of the streets and the favelas there in, in Bahia and helping them. And then with the radio he has, uh, help, helping the kids to he's bring the kids everywhere to do demonstrations. It's, it's really cool how Capoeira is just like the tools that can give you to get out of whatever situation you are. Definitely. Then, yeah, yeah. The, uh, how, long, how long has been this program? been going on in the yeah so uh we call the program capoeira in the classroom yeah uh, so okay the goal is to bring capoeira into these uh k through 12 uh classrooms yeah uh, sometimes we go to the gym but that's not yeah. <laughs> this one, but uh and we started this spring so i think february was our first visit 
so it hasn't been long, but we've already reached like over 250 students. Oh, cool. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and what we usually do is we do three visits uh, in each school because something that I knew I didn't want to do is just like go once. Yeah, and yeah, for sure. Tell them about it and then disappear and they'll never yeah. see us again. Yeah. So we try to come more than once uh, to each school to establish this relationship with the kids. Yeah. Uh, I feel it becomes more meaningful to them. Uh, yeah, for sure. It's not just any random person just coming to, to the presentation yeah. and leaving. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's really cool. That's a good idea. And what, what is the what, sorry? What is the age of of the, all the kids? So we do our youngest was preschool, so three year olds. Oh, cool! And our oldest was high school seniors, so <laughs> seventeen, eighteen. So we've done um, uh, all uh, uh, stages of school. Yeah, we create this little booklet to give them. I also wanted oh, to cool. have like something, a uh, material thing for them to take home and like yeah. remember a couple later. Yeah, and then we have two different guides. One is for K through five, and then there's like coloring activities and oh, there's a magic awesome. activity. And then the six through twelve, it's more uh, straightforward. I mean, yeah. Oh, that's really cool. That's really cool. And then, uh, oh, you you were about to say something, video. No, I mean, well, so to talk a little bit more about how it started. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I I had the 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 privilege to to meet Layla because I did this workshop at OSU, and then Layla uh, uh, reached out and she proposed that we could like do this program, and I was like, yes, all the way, right? Oh, heck because yeah, it, it's. Um, I think that it's, uh, not always that you have the opportunity to have these spaces oh, you yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. and having like also always you, it's a connection with like high schools and elementary schools. Um, I think it's amazing, but, um, this was initially like a whole initiative, like spearheaded by Layla. So. Uh, yeah, first, nice. I want to thank Leila for, for well, what I she's want to thank Betty because without yeah. his expertise, it, wasn't, it would just be me with an idea. Uh, yeah. So uh, he's an amazing Capoeira instructor. The kids love him. That's so cool, uh, man. They're all super into it. Like when they're at first, some of them are a little shy, but then Betty is able to like get them out of their comfort, comfort zone sometimes. Uh, yeah. That's he's so amazing. Cool, thank you. That's thank cool. you. Yeah, but so I think this is a cool example of how right like the, the academia part can come together to the practice because yes, Leila says that maybe uh, I'm a little I can help a little bit the kids like to 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 start like coming into capoeira, like the music to practice, but then uh, it's through Leila's um initiative that it was this was also possible and I think it would be a good thing that we keep thinking about this because one of the things I talked about during my, my research, my master was precisely that, like how practice has been like very disconnected, even through um, research that does like a lot of ethnographic work and like yeah. that uses the body as, as, as a way of knowledge. Yeah. There's a lot of criticism right now in the other in in the academia from some parts that the practice is like still way too disconnected from the theory and like right so it's like all that knowledge that is produced then where is it going or or so I think it's a good way to to use these spaces to um, share that knowledge and why not also like share a little bit more of that more academic academic knowledge to the capoeira community uh, but at the same time given the relevance that the like mestres and mestras like yeah people who have dedicated their lives to capoeira are considered as well as those like professionals who even though sure. it's not like a phd title yeah still yeah. It, it's something that has so much value in terms of oh, yeah. knowledge right like that knowledge that can be like um, 
pass on to the next generation. Yeah. So I think may, it might be a, a little initiative, but it can help like bridging that gap that we sometimes see. Yeah. You, you said a really good, important key that, that is happening today. Uh, I, I think it's, it's kind of like on the way of changing on, on how people don't take capoeira too serious because there's no like a degree or a paper. And then, and then people are like, well, you know, but you've been doing capoeira for this long and, and how, how are you professional? Yeah, it's, it's like, it's, it's good for us to like bring that kind of material to college and to, to, to the kids to change that mentality. Because yes, there can be people that they're not, they can be doing capoeira for 20 years and they're not, not going to be teaching classes. But there's going to be those that are going to be doing capoeira for 20 years and they've been teaching for 15 years or having classes or growing a class. And then that aspect is not, it's not easy. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, it's a, uh, how long, how long is the program? Is the program like one, one couple hours, a few weeks? So we, we try to do three weeks back to back. So. Oh, cool. Okay. Nice. And how long each session is depending on uh, each teacher because like they have to follow a curriculum. Some, some oh, teachers man. are able to give us the whole class period. Sometimes we have to divide it and it's like 30 minutes for one part of the class and 30 minutes for the other part. Yeah. So we really have to adapt. I mean, mostly video, but really has to yeah. adapt to what the teacher allows, how long the teacher allows us to do. So, okay. So sometimes it's like one song and two movements and um uh, we try to build it up so like yeah. the first day we introduce some of the instruments and a song and some movements and then the next day other instruments i don't know if anybody want to talk more to in detail about like what's your thought process when you decide oh let's do this song or this uh, movement first so when we were working with leila in like framing uh the structure of of the visits yeah and when Leila like put together the booklet, that was amazing because they they take this. I, I helped a little, like, let's use these songs, let's use these movements. So yeah. but then Leila put all that info That's together so in cool. this book. That I think that was wonderful because like that way at least they, they take something, right? But so yeah. what um what I usually do, what we usually do, uh, we talk a little bit about the the what capoeira is, being that sometimes it can be like like very holistic, right? But I try to yeah. give them like like a context. I try to talk a little bit, depending, of course, on the level or like the age range we're working with. But I yeah, talk a little bit about like how capoeira is this practice that is related to those who were enslaved in the Afro-Brazilian community and also those connections to Africa. I talk very briefly about the transatlantic slave trade and like the connections like geographically and then how practices like capoeira, not just capoeira, like developed right in this in this process over yeah. the years. Then I tell them a little bit just that how capoeira is now like practice in other places in, in the United States. And then what we do is that we either start introducing the instruments, but what we start doing with that is that we also start introducing the Portuguese language. Oh, so cool. okay. It's like, okay, this is called Pandeiro. Can you say Pandeiro? Uh, the Atabaki and like giving a little bit of quick context, but then also Leila helping um, with the pronunciation of the words. So they repeat, yeah. so they start like having this, um, um, like approached its connection, not only to Capoeira, but also to Portuguese. Nice. Then sometimes we have had like the challenge to work in classrooms where like there's no space to move so much. Yeah, yeah. And then it's just adapting, right? If we need to give more emphasis to the music or if, we can start like with movements that they can um, do in like their the like spaces. We usually go right like jinga. We played a lot with this idea of 
how we we teach kids like with the uh, animals yeah then we go to if there's salmon if there's the space a little bit like male or french a little bit of uh cocorinha yeah. oh so those those movements that start like then connecting and jinga we interact a little bit with them uh even if there's time with with the high school seniors we did a whole like workshop period in which like it was like a workshop workshop oh, but cool. that was possible because before that we did like a whole day visit in which we talked we played the instruments and then for the workshop they already had all this background yeah and we were able to do like a bigger like workshop workshop for them yeah. and that that was really really cool i enjoyed it a lot there we even had like the chance to play a little bit with them yeah um and then um towards the end of the class like we go to the songs so again it depends on which uh, age range we are in but then we use the songs and the songs are also useful to help them go in contact with with portuguese language yeah. right sometimes right. we use something very simple like oi sim 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 oi no 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 yeah. and then creating that idea of call and response but then sometimes other songs um and so it's a very like ludic way to use capoeira elements to introduce in the classroom so i think that has been like really cool like some songs help a lot like you are you'll be you are you'll be you'll say, right yeah and if we write that on the board then they create that connection then they see those on the booklet because what leila also did is that on the booklet um she put these qr codes next to the song so that takes them to a youtube video where oh they cool listen to oh, the song sorry. yeah and so yeah those, those are the elements we usually use yeah. um and the idea is i think to plant a seed right yeah 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 i sure. don't expect all of them to like become capoeira right? <laughs> yeah. but i think capoeira can touch their lives yeah in ways that we might not even be aware of yeah, yeah but yeah, exactly. if we can plant that seed and at the same time as Leila mentioned, if we can also like uh, promote a little bit more like Portuguese language and yeah. the culture that comes with it, then I think that's like yeah, exactly. Well, we and then uh, Leila, do do you have like a like some uh, approach to how to teach the kids, uh, especially the pronunciation? And then, because I'm pretty sure the the same pronunciation can be for for adults like if, if there's a, a americans uh for so it, it's kind of tricky for because a lot of people say well if you speak spanish it's going to be easier yes yes and no but yeah because uh, sometimes uh, uh in, in spanish you say portuño and then because yeah. it's like they mix that uh, uh, the spanish in the in the in the portuguese there but for for the pronunciation and then the phonetical part of the parties how how do you approach that for a kid or people listening to these doing exercises or something like that yeah it's both mostly uh by repetition so we try to repeat words nice. as many yeah, times yeah, for sure. the main issue that i see is with the sing because they oh, do yeah. sing, like they close their lips in the sim yeah 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 so no sing with your lips open so yeah uh, well they're actually pretty good right with the pronunciation i i i and we're also like not super focused on that. Like if they sure, pronounce yeah. it wrong, it's still better than yeah. not even knowing about it. Yeah. Uh, we're also lucky that some of the classrooms that we visited have Brazilian students. So they really also, oh, they help cool. also with, and so they, they were like, up, to it. yeah, they're like, I got it. <laughs> um, so that was really cool. Nice. Yeah, I can say the, the, you, you're right, the M at the end, is yeah. is tricky it's very tricky like when 10 10 and then when when you know it's, it's yeah it's, it's, it's a little tricky then uh do, do you do you also have like Leila, do you also have like the kids like write write the songs or just like repeat just repeating it sometimes repeating. we write it on the board especially if they're younger if they're older okay. we have it in the booklet so we tell them hey open your book to page whatever yeah uh, and they follow along. I feel like that worked really well, uh, Betty Bell, in our last class, right? Just like they had something to look at. Because sometimes just repeating, they 
they are repeating the sounds, but I feel like it's more difficult in their head to understand what they're saying. And uh, yeah. saying those words, maybe it's a little easier. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I feel like sometimes helping, it helps them to see what it is that they're saying. Not yeah. always. Sometimes I don't feel like it's necessary. For singing and now, like, they're fine with that song. ABC yeah. also really goes fine. Yeah. More words, I feel, if it's a little more complicated. The way exactly, yeah. Yeah. That's actually pretty smart to put in a QR code in the in the booklet because everybody, especially kids now, also have phones, smartphones, <laughs> and they can scan and that. I wanted, use. I wanted them to be able to use what they learned at home. So yeah. that's why I had the activities and I had the QR codes for like, oh, remember that song? Let me listen to it again. Or hey, let me show my dad or my mom what I yeah uh, what we did in class today, and then yeah, they'll play. It. So because if they had to look it up, maybe they'll mistype something or use that's a good point. crazy uh, yeah. suggestions. So I wanted yeah. to like that. The yeah. Videos. So I hope the links don't break. Uh, <laughs> they will have to like uh, update as we go. Uh, yeah. Don't yeah. Just, like share the links. The QR codes are still working. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, that that's I think that's a that's a really smart approach to. You know, just use the, today's tools to to have them approach the, any situation. And then uh, you say you, you started this program this February? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, nice. Then and how, how long or like how many stages are there or or do you guys have, like as you say, uh, video, you said that you guys are like framing the work and framing the, the things. How, how, how do you, I, and I know it depends on the time and the teachers and what you're going to teach but for like especially for kids because they're six years old is going to learn different from a teenager and then how how do you frame that and before going to to the to the classroom so i know that with kids um up to like maybe seven eight i can play a little bit more with interacting with them directly in, in, in into the idea of let's play like this is like a way we can play a game yeah and using all the elements around capoeira right again like when we're going to a uh, bear position and we're going to switch to crab position and then we're going to go or like bananera things like that like um sometimes for them it's like it's the interaction develops, right? And yeah. and so that interaction develops in, in like a more dynamic way within the movement, right? Yeah. And so there, I know we can give a little bit more um, emphasis to that or work a bit more on that. We, in general, we keep the same time frames. Um, class to class within those same age ranges. Because for instance, we want them to um, go to the instruments yeah. and try and try them. Like, you know, because we want the experience to be immersive for yeah. them. Like yeah. not just us uh, uh, up in the front talking and then telling them that like, do, do, but also like inviting them to, okay, we introduce the instruments, now it's your turn. So come, yeah. Experiment, to play, get a try, yeah. And so they, for instance, those ages that like they get very excited because it's like, oh, I want to try, and I yeah. even the beating bows, you know. Uh, so that part is very important because then we start creating that that connection. Yeah. For the older ones that's a little bit more challenging in the sense that they are going yeah. through an aging which like it's I, a lot I'm about silly or whatever yeah exactly it's like oh I, i'm not gonna do that or yeah uh, i don't need to make fun of me exactly like they, they, <laughs> they, don't, they don't like to be on the spotlight because yeah. it's that age right in which like you're starting to trying to figure out who you are what you want yeah. to do so many things in your head yeah so with them as Leila mentioned in some classes we have had the chance to 
have Brazilian students. That's helped us a lot to uh, ease the, the atmosphere. Nice. <laughs> uh, but when it comes to those ages, um, I try to focus a little bit more, for instance, in the martial part. Like oh in cool the okay. and that you have to dodge and it's yeah. like you know so I try to switch the, the the approach yeah we also go to the instruments but then uh, with the songs I try to challenge them a little bit more um, not just like sounds and this and that but like and also tell them like okay I have a challenge for you like let's yeah. see if you can do handstand like a bananera or like things like that so there they start like interacting a little bit more into that um, yeah so it, it will depend I, I you as a capoeira instructor know yeah. how sometimes you have to adapt to what comes in that moment yeah yeah and yeah, it's yeah. like you try to read the room as yeah. well uh, yeah one thing I like, and I think that's been like very rewarding, is that sometimes teachers tell us like, yeah, they remember the song they were singing. Oh, they were cool. excited about you coming next class. And so that I think is a good motivation for Leila and I to like yeah. keep doing this. Uh, yeah. Because sometimes it's like that bit of extra besides the things Leila, for instance, has to do as a Portuguese coordinator. And me, besides like the work at Center for Latin American Studies and this and that, and also like the other projects. Right. Yeah. So the, then you, uh, like Leila, you reach out to, to the school and then you tell them, like, hey, we're running this program. This is the objective, the age ranges, and how, how is that process? Yeah. So I already had some contacts from some work that I did in graduate oh, school. Cool. Okay. Uh, the Center for Latin American Studies also had some contacts of people interested in things related to Brazil. So like if they had an event nice. and there were teachers, so they had a list. Uh, I was very, I don't know, direct. I just started emailing people like, hey, yeah. we're doing this. Do you want uh, your school to participate? Would you be interested? Or is there any other teacher in your school that... Uh, would be interested. So uh, we mostly work with either Spanish teachers or ESL, English as a second language teachers. Nice, okay. Uh, six through 12th grade, like uh, K through five is just the grade teacher, so. Yeah. But I would, I, I thought we would work more with like music and gym teacher because, yeah. you know, it's what Capoeira is more, I don't know, related to, but those are, uh, these are the teachers that I reached back out. Um, and everyone has been super open. I thought someone would be like, "No, nah, I don't. I'm not interested." Yeah, not everyone replied, so I guess those are the ones. Who... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, for the most part, all of the ones because I didn't reach out to everyone in my list. I still have people that I could uh, reach out to. But since the first ones uh, were interested, like I feel like our calendar is pretty full until the end of the spring. Nice. Uh, that's awesome. Well, yeah, for like if we were to if we, if we continue this project, I already have other uh, people to reach out to uh, who I hope uh, are interested. But again, it was just like me putting my face out there and be like, hey, we're doing this. Do you want? Yeah. Uh, uh, and I, I don't know if this is, uh, I would, because teachers like, from what I've seen, uh, introducing or having their students experience different things yeah for sure yeah at first that they would like no i need to stick to my curriculum and i need to do these things to get the students prepared to whatever but no yeah. they were they've been very open um and uh, I, i'm pretty sure like for all the capoeira community like if you reach out to some schools in your area or if you reach out to like if you if there's a university also that has Portuguese and you want to start a similar program, I am very confident that people will be open to it and would welcome you into their schools because we've had a, a great experience and everyone is so excited when we come in. Like even the teachers who are not the ones we're gonna visit, we're walking in with the instruments and they're like, "Oh, that's so ah, cool. that's so cool." So uh, don't be afraid of reaching out because yeah. I really would 
be interested in some type of collaboration or partnership. Yeah, yeah, because you never know who's going to say yeah. You know, he says for every for every I don't know probably like ten people that you reach out, three or four people that say yes, it's a good number. Yeah, and like honestly, each kid that we reach, as uh, Beriba said, like we want to plant that seed, and it might yeah. grow into an awesome capoeira tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, all of them will be super interested, but like now that they know, now they know about it, and before they didn't. Now they yeah. play the instruments and they hadn't before. Yeah, now they know about capoeira, about Portuguese, and before they didn't. So yeah, I'm really pleased that we've expanded their world experience. You know. Yeah, that's really cool. And then, uh, for like video, do you are are you thinking on on after these programs, like having like kids programs, like on your own, and then you can be like, hey, you know, also I teach this. <laughs> If you want to try. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm actually teaching at a community center in Columbus. Nice. So since I came to the master's program, I started like having these mini, mini projects here and there. That's smart, man. Uh, yeah, and little by little. So sometimes graduate school can be very demanding. <laughs> uh, very, very demanding. And But at the same time, being in graduate school helped me like with two things like first know that no matter what I will always have to give like time my time to capoeira uh, I, I could not live without it but at the same time uh, it helped me find ways to connect what I do uh, in capoeira uh, in like academia and this and that and putting that together opened many doors so Uh, two years ago when I was here in Athens, Ohio, and uh, not many people knew about me or what I did, but then I went to dance school and I said like, Hey, like, yeah, we could like have this, um, workshop. Why not? We had a workshop and from there things started growing up. And then my advisor, who is like director of the school of dance here at OU, um, told me like, Hey, do you want to participate in this? Do you want to participate in that? And I was like saying yes to everything up to a point yeah. that I was like, why did I say yes to everything? <laughs> <laughs> and then now you're revoked. <laughs> but yeah, but what that did was like, you know, like a, a stone in in, a, in water and how like that spans. The ripple effect, yeah. And it was so crazy because when I was presenting at a conference about my research with Capoeira, the person who's now my supervisor at OSU was in that. And oh, then nice. he saw me talking about that. Yeah, Mark was there. That was crazy. <laughs> That's and later on, I started working with him when I was you. But then, so they already knew a little bit about what I did with Capoeira. And they also gave me like this space to have a workshop being always nice. you, which is how I met Leila. Nice. And now here in Athens, I'm also teaching some dance school students, but I also have like some workshops i have another one in two weeks in a dance studio in town that's great man. and then in columbus yeah i then started making some connections and i went out like to those community centers and told them like hey uh would you be interested and finally one of those which is also very close to osu said like yeah we're in And now we have that space uh, on Tuesdays. And so there I'm teaching kids yeah. and adults. So you see, everything started like building up and yeah. creating those connections. So I think this program is part of that. Um, we sometimes tell them like, yeah, if you'd be interested, we have classes here. Um, and so we have the opportunity. Uh, once I start the the PhD program, it's going to be a little bit more challenging because of my international student and migratory status, because yeah. I'm not allowed to like work off campus. So that that's going to be a challenge for sure in terms of how to sustain like the Capoeira community. But at the same time, I think that the connections that we've been able to create with the university, much of that thanks to Leila and the Center for Latin American Studies, the, the, the Spanish and Portuguese program, and now uh, 
I think a little bit of the dance program at OSU. Um, I think we'll find a way to somehow continue the work on campus and yeah. then see how that goes. So yeah, I don't, as I said before, I know we have this goal of planting that seed, but at the same time, I think this combined with those uh, other like initiatives are like amazing opportunities to like just keep growing right yeah 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 and then uh so that's that's pretty much is a part of the goal to you know like eventually uh promoting capoeira there and then eventually also growing your class using that that kind of like kind of like a filter you know like to start bringing capoeira to 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 those kids or or even adults at some point yeah, definitely. I mean, um, my goal is to keep working with Capoeira in yeah. any way I can. And yeah, um, that's smart, man. That's I, smart, yeah, man. When, yeah. So when when I was in Ecuador, I was already teaching a bit, and I had the fortune to have like very good uh, guides and mestres. Uh, coming here, being far from that community, yeah. I realized that my path as a Capoeirista was taking a new like chapter yeah and here uh when i met you at north carolina and i also yeah. met lovino i had the that that like wonderful opportunity to meet like miss lovino and then little by little that interaction with lovino started like developing and then i decided to 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 be part of the of of lovino's group and then he has mentored me so much like he's always there all the yeah. time asking me how did the class go how is everything That's awesome. and yeah and i feel that i've been able to create that network like support network uh, within the capoeira community but also from the other side like the university the academia and i think that can only be good for the projects of capoeira for capoeira in yeah. like columbus ohio Capoeira Brazil already does like a wonderful job in other places in Ohio. Yeah. And I think that if we can help our community with this, 100%. my goal would be to do that, right? To help yeah. our Capoeira community and the community in the place I live, in this case, like Columbus, Athens, like create a space for that Capoeira community to work, like to grow little by little. And I think that can be good, not only for for me as a capoeirista or for like capoeira in itself but like for the community right when when yeah for sure when we yeah. see all the things that capoeira does in people's lives it's difficult to explain sometimes yeah. to someone yeah. who has not <laughs> been exposed yeah, yeah, but yeah once they see once they once like the 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 parents see how their kids do in the classes once yeah like the teachers see how the kids like become like so like connected with this it's like then that capoeira magic just happens yeah 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 for sure yeah and then it's, it's like you said is plenty to see it and then here to a few years you know those, those kids are gonna be like see you doing capoeira somewhere be like oh i've i've seen this before you know they probably do, are, they're, not, they're not gonna remember but then they're gonna be like oh i've seen this before this uh, uh, i know that i've done this it was fun and i'm gonna give it a try and then you know probably catch few few people and and here in the future they become capoeiristas in the future yeah anywhere they go i'm sure like if they see yeah. like in the streets or at the universities or anywhere they're going to be like yeah i've seen that yeah definitely yeah yeah i think i think it will be cool and then a good chance for them to to learn capoeira just like for the future and then uh once how, how long is the program or are you guys planning on doing the the program like all the year, every year for 10 years, I don't know. Our last visit for this cycle is in May. Yeah. It's gonna, oh, cool, uh, okay. To May. Um, and for the future, I don't know. <laughs> Hope we can keep the, go, going like every semester at different schools. And I know that some schools already want us back for next year. That's um, awesome. Yeah, hopefully we can like build long lasting relationships. Yeah. Unfortunately, it all depends on funding, on teaching releases, and all of that. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm very grateful for the Department of Spanish and Portuguese for supporting me in this. Like, yeah, I could be like in the classroom teaching uh, Portuguese 1101, but instead they let me do this. So I really appreciate this opportunity. Yeah, um, as long as they let me keep doing it, I will. And as long as Beriba is available also, because I know that he's very busy with all his Capoeira projects, but I hope that we can like do a long-term project and have this every semester. Yeah. That's the and during the year, you guys offering the program just in spring or you guys are going to do like the, the last part of the year too? I think we could do it in the fall as well. I think there's enough interest for us to do it in the fall. That's cool, man. That's really cool. That's really cool. Especially because that, that the, you know, schools have so, like rotation of the kids. So you can have one spot and then you're going to have many, many, many kids. You can, so many, so many, so many opportunities that you can see in the future. That's so cool. And then hopefully like the people who see us next year will talk to the people who saw us this previous year and be like, oh, yeah, no, exactly. I yeah, 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 exactly. And then, it's, it, and then, you know, those teachers are going to meet other teachers or not other teachers. And then, you know, the, the word is spread and here to one year, two years, you're probably going to be like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be able to teach uh, your school because we're already booked for the whole year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, which is the goal, right? To, to, to be busy and then to, to keep adding all this information as much as we can. Yeah, for sure. Go ahead, video, go ahead. Yeah, like it's a very mouth to mouth thing, right? Yeah. Um, as Leila said, we don't know for sure. It depends a lot on um, funding and also like, because it's not like we are doing this as something extra and we're charging or any, like, it is an initiative that has pretty much been possible thanks to the willingness of Leila to like put the, all this together. Yeah. Uh, I know I do my part. But um, those connections were created thanks to what Leila has done, like yeah. from the position she she is in now, and that's awesome because that's a wonderful way to to create those connections. And then um, even if I start like that PhD program, I'll be my goal is to stay close, right, to this. Uh, work these connections i'm sure uh, that as long as we have the support of uh, the university in different ways and yeah. the willingness of teachers we might do this i mean i know as every process i know that the more we do it the more we will start realizing like what we need to focus more on or what um sort of approach we want to give it like do we want to give to the project and i'm sure that if we're able to continue hopefully this can become something that is more like sort of like on paper yeah kind of yeah like but if we can start like <clears throat> building this process yeah. for them the university to have like this kind of approach in like their outreach efforts to the yeah. community why not right i mean i don't think there's like a end of the line. I think it's yeah. just, as you know, like in Capoeira, we keep learning all the time. And with this, yeah. I think it's just the same, right? I mean, I think that our love for Capoeira moves us to yeah. know that we yeah, will yeah, be sure. working with this as long as we're able to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sure. I think that's the the, the goal. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Since the project is just like pretty much starting now, I think we have room to explore. Oh yeah, like, for sure. Yeah. And it's going to be, it's going to yeah. keep improving. It's going to keep changing. And then, you know, like you said, adapting, you just, you know, this is not working that much. Let's change this now and see how that works. And then eventually until you get to a spot and be like, oh yeah, this is actually working really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. And then we can do another podcast next year and see how it is and here to yeah. one year and see how it is <laughs> here to there. And how much growth yeah. and what works and all that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that would be yeah. amazing. Yeah, the, the you you mentioned something which a lot of people are are kind of like uh, easily the touchy topic on the getting paid for capoeira. You guys get paid for that? No, no I get a 
course release for yeah. my outfit, which means instead of teaching a class, so in my contract, instead of being in the classroom, I am yeah. out there. So oh. I don't get paid directly, but yes, it's part of my job to do outreach. And what oh. I decided to do was the cup waiter in the classroom project. So ah, that's cool. Nice. Indirectly, yes, I get paid. Yes. Yeah. I use not my direct. hours for outreach. You know. Oh, okay. So it's not, not directly from the schools where you guys teach. Oh no, not the schools. Ah, okay, okay, cool. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah no, I, I mean, yeah. Like cool use your hours from class or yeah. So um uh, Mark the the assistant director of the Center for Latin American Studies. Uh, I work with him and he's being amazingly receptive to these outreach efforts, right? So this is considered part of my working hours, right? Yeah. At the Center for Latin American nice. Studies. Okay. Also because I have to drive from Athens to Columbus. And how far that is that? Is, it's one hour and 20 minutes. It's not oh, that long. Man, yeah. But right. it's, it's almost three, it's almost three hours in one day. <laughs> or like every time. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's it's okay. I, I really don't mind, but yeah, for sure, for sure. Sometimes I know it, what is important about what you mentioned that getting or not getting paid is that sometimes these efforts require more than just the, the perspective of I want to like get paid for what I do. It's, yeah. It's just something that you know that will help you get your goals in many yeah. different aspects. And yeah. I think that once we start like interacting with Capoeira and this idea of promoting it and passing this on to the next generations, it becomes something that it, <clears throat> you do it because you believe in something. Yeah, you have a goal. Sure. Yeah. And yeah, I, yeah. I'm not trying to romanticize this as like, yeah, no, this is like, it. no, it's like you do something because you believe in that, right? Yeah. And even though, you know, it takes if everything that is worth working for takes that that effort, right? And yeah. for me, it's very rewarding again seeing like how the kids interact with what we do and seeing that when we go into the classroom, they are willing <clears throat> to know more about what we have to say or what we have to show them. Yeah. Right. And I I think that that's also a way for me to give back to Capoeira what Capoeira has given to me. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Passing forward to the kids and you know, touching those lives, creating those connections. Yeah. Um. So that's that's uh. Eventually, of course, uh. It's important that your work, as I said before at the beginning, it's important that we recognize and that we validate and then we give value to that work of people that maybe not does not have like formal titles but yeah the job they do within the communities they are in is like much more than uh that what we do but oh yeah uh yeah i think we we have to navigate uh those challenges we have to navigate those dynamics right and yeah try to see how we can adapt to that and then keep working yeah on, on what for what we believe in yeah yeah no that's awesome man. that's awesome and then well thank you so much guys uh it was it was cool to to learn and and see how these projects develop and then i'm happy also to catch this program at the very beginning because i'm excited to see how how much it's going to grow and then you know like video i'm pretty sure i'm i'm 100 sure i'm gonna see you again uh, uh alisa lobinos in, in may and then yeah <laughs> yeah and then there we can talk Thank about me like, yeah <laughs> oh yeah you're coming to, to our i i will try to go with the first one but if you do the couple of experience like, towards the, the festival you know, yeah i'll be there for sure heck yeah man yeah you know yeah 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 for sure and then you know we can talk there uh and be like hey you know my program is is growing is now he's now he's bringing these people to my class and he's helping me to to grow my class and i hope i can i can hear that and then this year at the end of this year in october i think that would go thanks thanks Ashishi. yeah hopefully i'll be able to keep working with leila as well again i cannot thank leila enough for what uh because she encouraged me a lot to nice. you know stay in columbus and pursue <laughs> other yeah. um uh, career goals to somehow keep this connection 
developing. So yeah. thank you again, Leila. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Leila, for for your time and and then sharing this, and also thank you for for you know helping the Capoeira community to to or Capoeira just also to get Capoeira out there for people and and is is a is a long term. Yeah. Gone. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, my goal is like the next generation knows more about capoeira than the current generation. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, that's cool, and then appreciate that. I guess yeah, is is you your help lead 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 people like everybody. Contribution in the capoeira community helps to, to for this art to spread around, and not just my city, all the cities, because you know, they that's the only thing about Americans. They they like to be moving around. You know, they finish school, they go to a few states, and then, they're like, oh, wait, I remember when I saw a kid, I was doing capoeira in Ohio. Now I'm in, I don't know, uh, Alaska. <laughs> and I'll do capoeira in Alaska. And then and things like that, you know, or, or yeah. they, they move around and then they, they see they see things all over the place. And it's, it's cool to have capoeira everywhere. And that makes me very happy. Well, oh, thank, thank you so for much. Of course, of course, yeah. And then let's definitely stay in touch and then we'll, we'll talk about this project. Sure. Next year or also. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Kashishi, for, for opening the space for us to talk about the project. Of course, of course. Thank you so much, guys. Hey, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being part of this episode one more time. And thank you so much for being part of the Capoeira community. I'm very happy you made it all the way to the end. Now, make sure you listen to the next episode next week or the following week or the previous episodes and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel and don't forget to follow us on instagram and don't forget to reach out so we can have you on the podcast okay thank you so much for being part of this amazing journey in the capoeira community and i really really hope to see you one time here in indianapolis or i'll see you in the hot next time okay Keep training, keep your capoeira school, keep supporting your capoeira school, and keep training, keep loving capoeira, keep training, keep training, keep playing the hoda. I'll see you in the hoda next time. 